All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome in. Breaking, breaking news here. Crazy stuff. A piece of the Jets schedule has been leaked. And our revamped Jets are going to be taking on the Carolina Panthers week one in Carolina. And then week five, we're going to London. We're traveling across the pond to take on the Atlanta Falcons, another NFC and another NFC South team here. Okay, so let's dive into these matchups. So let's talk about the one that's happening first. Let's talk about the big one here. Okay, the one that's going to have tons of storylines. Sam Darnold versus Zach Wilson, Sam Darnold versus his old team, all of that good stuff. Carolina Panthers week one. I cannot wait for this matchup. All right. I, I think it's actually a really good matchup, but we're going to get into it. But first, we have to take a look at the Carolina Panthers. Who are they? This is a team that record-wise last year wasn't really too good. Teddy Bridgewater was inconsistent at the quarterback position. They lost a bunch of games. There was a lot of inexperience on the team, right? A lot of youth, uh, not just on the field, but with the coaching staff as well. This was Matt Rule's first rodeo as a head coach last year. Same with Joe Brady as a full-time offensive coordinator. But the thing that I absolutely loved last season about the Carolina Panthers is that they fought every single Sunday. They never laid down. They never backed down. Go look at how many one possession losses this team had last year. Go look at how many elite teams that the Panthers pushed to the absolute brink, like the Chiefs, like the Saints, okay? So the Panthers came to play. Now you're adding Terrace Marshall, J.C. Horn, Hassan Reddick. I'm expecting this Panthers team to get a lot better. And I'll say this about Sam Darnold. Like, if I'm a Panther fan, uh, I, I, would, I would have to be excited for Sam. I mean, because he had all of these excuses all the time in New York. He never had any, you know, any help. He didn't have the best coaching staff, all of these different things. In Carolina, there's no more excuses. He has the weapons. Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore. Okay, Terrace Marshall coming in from LSU, 4-3 speed, deep threat. He has the running game. Christian McCaffrey, arguably the best running back in the entire National Football League. He has the offensive line. He has a young and up-and-coming defense. He has the coaching staff, Matt Rule, Joe Brady. He has a good offensive system in place with a good play caller. And if I'm a Panther fan and I'm listening to all of these things that went wrong with Sam Darnold, like it's, you know, all of these other issues, I'm pretty excited, right? Because the Panthers don't have those issues. They have pretty much everything figured out. But I love this matchup, right? If the NFL NFL were to contact me and, and pretty much hit me up and say, hey man, we need you to pick the team that the Jets play in week one, my response would probably be, okay, I want to play a young team, a team with a lot of inexperience, and a team with a brand new quarterback. That's exactly who the Carolina Panthers are, okay? And it just so happens that Darnold is coming from the Jets, who spent so much time watching Sam Darnold this offseason. The Jets, Joe Douglas, Robert Sala, Mike LaFleur, Jeff Ulbrich, they really spent time, countless time, countless hours, really trying to figure out the quarterback position, whether to keep Sam Darnold, turning down numerous trade offers, multiple trade offers coming in from teams like the San Francisco 49ers and the Washington football team, turning those down because their heels were so dug in on getting this decision right. They, they weren't making the quarterback decision overnight. So the New York Jets coaching staff spent the entire offseason dissecting every single snap Sam Darnold has ever taken at the NFL level and that could even go back to college. So if there's any coaching staff out there that has an idea about what Darnold's good at and bad at, it's this one. Also, Sam Darnold has struggled big time against Robert Sala in the past, so that's a plus. And I'll, I'll throw this in there as well. Worst case scenario, Jets lose the game. The Jets lose the game week one. It is what it is. We're walking away as losers. We're losing to an NFC team. We're not playing the Buffalo Bills, thank God. I feel like we play the Bills week one every single year. We're not doing it this year, all right? So we're not really starting off the year 0-1 0-1 in the conference, 0-1 in the division. No, it's just an NFC game. It's not the end of the world if the Jets were to lose. Moving on to the Falcon game. So week five, 9.30 a.m. kickoff, we're going to be taking on the Atlanta Falcons. And this is another plus. It is an NFC team. It is a team with a brand new head coach in Arthur Smith, right? Brand new staff. This is his first crack at being a head coach. So we don't really know what the Falcons are going to be looking like. This is a stacked team, though. Matt Ryan can still play. He's not what he once was. Of course, we all know that. But the Falcons have weapons. They have tons of first-round picks invested in the offensive line. I don't really know what's happening at running back, but it is what it is. Arthur Smith, I know the, the, the expectation of Arthur Smith was, okay, he's going to do what he did in Tennessee, in Atlanta. But I think it was more so Arthur Smith looking at the Titans saying, you know what, I know the team's strengths. I know the team's weaknesses. We all know Derrick Henry's an absolute ball player, so therefore, we're going to run the system or, or really run the offense through him. I expect a lot more throwing with the Atlanta Falcons just because Arthur Smith really does a good job of just getting out of the way and letting his players um, 
just go out there and succeed and do what they're really good at. So we, we can't really project where the Falcons are going to be in week five just because I just feel like this is such a win now team. They have so much talent, so, you know, so much talent on this team. And we've heard some rumors about Julio Jones maybe getting traded, but I think when it's all said and done, Julio remains a Falcon which is good for the Falcons fans, because I truly think that Atlanta can make a push this year. But again, when we're looking at it from the Jets perspective, we could really dig deep here. Okay, maybe I'm just, a, like, I don't know, hear me out. If I'm Mike LaFleur, I'm giving a call to Matt LaFleur, his brother, right? Call Matt LaFleur and ask, pick his brain about Arthur Smith. They were both on the Tennessee Titans staff at the same time. He must have some information about how Arthur Smith likes to do things. And now I get it, it's a completely different team, but it couldn't hurt. Where did Jeff Ulbrich come from? Atlanta. When Jeff Ulbrich took over as interim defensive coordinator at the tail end of last year, that's when the Falcons defense really started to click. It really started to turn on. So Ulbrich knows a thing or two about this Falcons defense, how to attack it, what the players' strengths, what the players' weaknesses are. Now, I don't really know what, what a new system will be implemented with the Falcons defense, anything crazy like that, but I do know this. From an overall knowledge perspective, Jeff Ulbrich knows that roster. He knows the ins and outs of not just the defense, but with the offense because he was with the Dan Quinn staff for a long, long time. The Falcons are also an NFC team. That's a plus. We talked about it with the Carolina Panthers where, you know, if we just so happen to lose, we're not going to be, you know, having that divisional loss, that conference loss as well. And then the last point I want to make is that we're going to be playing in London. It's an away game, and the benefit is that we're not going to be entering a stadium just absolutely packed in with Falcons fans. So, It'll be London. I'm hoping it'll be a nice mix of a bunch of NFL fans. I I love the uh, I love the London games. I know they kind of get a bad rap, but personally, I love them. I love waking up early on Sunday after a long day, staying up till 2 a.m. watching college football, Pac-12 Mountain West, and then to wake up early the next day. It's the only time in my life I, I ever like waking up early. So, um, yeah, pa uh, Panthers and Falcons. It's going to be nuts. Two NFC South teams have been released. The full thing gets released tonight. And uh, my gosh, it's going to be so much fun. I can't wait for it. It's so fun to see everything kind of materialize. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, go Jets.